Hi guys, it's Sophie. So I'm going to do my January wrap up. This is going to be a long one, settle in with a cup of tea. I'm going to do a kind of quick fiery one like I did last month, but there's 18 books to show you so it might just take me a minute or two. I'm going to try and start with the ones I like the least and move on up, but it's really not exact um, because I'm going to try and do it quick. So I dnf two books this month. Uh, the first was Sworn Virgin by Elvira Donez, um, which I read most of but just wasn't getting that much from it and really wanted to get into some other stuff and just thought there's no point pushing myself for it. Um, really similar story with the Atom Station, I was quite enjoying it but it got weirder and weirder as things went on and I kind of got lost to it. Um, I very very nearly finished that one but I don't have either to show you because I've given them on to charity um, because I DNF them and I don't, I don't keep any books that I DNF back on my shelves. So. Those are the first two. So on to the next pile of ones I kind of enjoyed but didn't really love. Um, the first one is The Book of Chameleons by Jose Eduardo Agalusa. Um, I loved his other book which is called A General Theory of Oblivion and I really really wanted to love this book. It's about a like talking chameleon and a man who deal in pasts. It was just too weird, it just didn't, I didn't get it. Like I was reading through it and I was kind of like reading it for the sake of reading it rather than necessarily getting anything of it and it had this weird thing where they kept introducing characters who we already knew like again as they'd never met them and then you'd go on you'd be like oh that's that guy and it just yeah I just didn't get get into it I didn't get it particularly um so I can't really say whether it's good or bad because I just didn't feel like it, I got hold of it really and then onto my kind of three star reads um I read and now we have everything um, or Motherhood Before I Was Ready by Megan O'Connell, which is the story of a woman who gets pregnant in her late to mid, mid to late 20s and decides to keep the baby, and the story of her pregnancy, and the story of the childbirth, and the story of the baby. Um, I'm like into like reading about um, motherhood, the cat is being dramatic under the colours. Um, I'm into like reading stories about motherhood recently. One second. She's just going to be loud, we're just going to have to deal with it. Um, so yeah, I've been really into reading stories about motherhood lately and picked this one up. Um, I found it quite interesting, I think I found it quite eye-opening. There's a lot of things in here about pregnancy and like that whole experience that I didn't know. Um, however, I do get why, but her tone was very down throughout the whole thing and very... I don't think she was very well like kind of throughout and it... I think I wanted some more positive elements in there, there was just so much in it that felt like it, it's so hard to say but it kind of felt like she felt like she'd made a mistake and I get that, I kind of get that this is like not the ideal time for her to have got pregnant and that it was a difficult thing for her um, and it felt very real but I just don't think, I, I think I needed just a little bit, some, something a little bit brighter in there um, to kind of grab hold of it. Um, so yeah, I did enjoy the process of reading it um, and I really would recommend it actually if you're looking for like views into motherhood but probably get some other things to balance out too. And then I read Homesick for Another World by Tessa Moshfeg. Um, these were really dark little short stories. Um, they were almost like painfully dark, like the setting as well as like the heart of the stories. And the reason I wouldn't rate it higher is I actually don't think any of the stories individually stood out to me. I can't remember much of what happened in any individual story, just the overall sense. Um, so that's kind of like a three star for me. I quite enjoyed it when I was reading it, but probably isn't going to stay with me forever. And then what else can I choose for a three star? Um, I would say that Women Talking is probably a three star by Marion Tellers. I did actually really like the idea of this. Um, it's about women who are... Um, well, the men think they're overcome with kind of female madness and they um, are suffering from essentially rape and sexual abuse and in their sleep. Um, and this book is telling the story of the women who are writing out their decision about whether to stay, leave or fight um, in the community they live in and there's a man who's recording it. It's such a brilliant idea um, and I actually don't think it was done badly or executed badly and I think lots of people would probably really enjoy this. Um, I just, I didn't quite get what I was looking for from this, which is a really hard thing to say when you're reviewing something. Um, there was a lot of strength here, but also quite a lot of distance, and I think I wanted the story to feel closer, and I think the male character who tells it, I understand his role, but I'd really wished we'd had it told through the main female character in the book instead, um, and I, I thought they were going to be a little bit closer to the women than it felt when you were reading it. Um, so that's why I could only kind of give it three, but 
you know, if you're into it, I think lots of people would like this, and I don't think that, that my issue with it is something everyone would have. Um, so you could definitely give that one a shot if that sounds interesting to you. And then I have Because They Wanted To by Mary Gatskill, and a similar kind of feel here um, to the Mosh Veg, but I do remember actually one pretty well um, called The Dentist about a woman who like falls in love with her dentist and it's all very messy and he doesn't love her at all, and I found that one really, really good. Um, and there weren't actually that many stories in here, I wouldn't say, um, but I still didn't grasp all of them. I think The Dentist I really liked and kept hold of, but most of them I didn't. I, den I did again like the feel of the book, um, so kind of like three for me. And then I finally finished Man Tiger by Eka Kernowan, um, which is a story about a man who has a mysterious white tiger living inside of him. Um, I started this one ages ago and finally wrapped up and was really glad that I did. I did enjoy it, I did like the story, I just read it too close to another book about people, women who turn into lions. So it was just a little bit too close, um, but I really liked it. It's quite sensual and quite um, rich in terms of like the writing and like, the imagery and um, it was just a cool like little kind of folky tale, it kind of felt that way, like kind of folk tale um, sense. And I would, I would recommend it. Um, it's quite ghostly as well. Like, yeah, it's a bit strange. It's Indonesian, um, but it's really good. It's kind of the tiger makes them do things. <laughs> Let's put it that way. But the tiger's also kind of like a wife. I don't know if that helps to explain it in any way. But yeah, man tiger. I did enjoy. I think I gave it one four stars. I read the Friendship Cure by uh, Kate Lever, um, which is a non-fiction kind of book memoir. I'll talk about that in a sec, um, about friendship and it's kind of celebrating all different kinds of friendship, talking about why friends are valuable, a lot about why friends are valuable and how to know who's a good friend and who's a bad friend. Um, the issue I had comes in like that first thing that I just said which was so much of this felt so personal to Kate Lever rather than it being universal so there were stats and I found the stats really interesting but there were quite a few times where I felt like she was just using her experience and making it seem like that was everyone, which felt a little bit odd to me. Um, and there was one thing that I really wouldn't raise because I was like reading it and I was like, no, um, there's a chapter in here called Can Men and Women Ever Be Friends? And I really wanted them to talk about bisexual or pan people in here um, because obviously for those people, it doesn't really, like the gender, <laughs> Thing. you're gonna have to have friends with some people of some genders and it just wasn't in there they talked about gay women and gay men and straight men and straight women and no one else and I was just a little bit disappointed that that wasn't in there that would have kind of made me love the book a bit more but I did gain quite a lot from it and I did enjoy the process of reading it and I felt like I learned quite a lot which was good and then I have How Should a Person Be by Sheila Hetty um, which is a story about a young woman who's kind of going, going around in her 20s being a woman in her 20s um, there's a lot about in here about her trying to write this play, there's this guy called Israel who's basically just like the best in bed ever of all men um, and like her arty kind of friends and do you know I'm only 25 but I felt like I was a little bit too mature for like the storyline I kind of felt like that floating around doing whatever you want in your 20s I'm kind of past um, so I enjoyed it I think it was really realistic and messy and felt like autobiography almost um, but I wanted something a little bit more grown up. I think I'm just getting to the stage where I'm like, I want to read about grown up grown ups, which is nice. Um, it's kind of like as your tastes are that. So I don't think this book is bad. I think it is actually pretty good um, and I enjoyed reading it. Um, but it is that kind of like messy 20s feel rather than that like together <laughs> 20s feel. I also read There There by Tommy Orange, um, which everyone has been raving about and I think rightly so. Um, this is a story about a group of people who don't really know each other, it's all kind of disparate stories of um, native people in America and they all have very different lives and they're connected in some, some stronger and some weaker ways to their kind of heritage and history um, and it all comes together to a point at the end which will go spoiler free. Um, and do you know I would have kind of been happy to read this without the point at the end to be honest, I didn't like I, I was just really liking reading in each character's line and there are some like facts like history things in here that have I've not been able to get out of my head and 
I read quite a lot of those bits aloud to Tom and he hasn't been able to get them off his head either. Um, I think it's really good. I think you should go and read it. Um, the hype is, is, you know, it's there for a reason. It is a really brilliant book and I think it's a debut. Let me check. Yeah, it's a debut. So I'm really looking forward to what he, re what he writes next and we'll pick it up when it gets there. Then I read The Library Book by Susan Orlean. Um, this is a non-violent true crime book about an arson which happened in a library. Nobody died but lots and lots and lots of books were very badly hurt um, and Susan Orlean is trying to find out a like who did it, <laughs> like what the story is, who committed the crime, why do they think that and telling the history of the fire. She's also like talking about libraries in a wider way. Um, I did really like it, I think if you're someone who's really into libraries, I used to be into libraries a lot when I was a kid and less so now, you're gonna love it. Um, it's got elements of both and I found I wanted more of the true crime element um, but kind of read through the libraries like oh that's interesting and the history of the library as well. But if you like both I think this is going to be like a little bit of a perfect package of a book for you. And I read the poetry collection There Are More Beautiful Things Than Beyonce by Morgan Parker. I actually read the book twice um, because I read it the first time way too quick and I didn't absorb enough of the poetry and I felt like I was going to give it a lower rating than it deserved so I was kind of aware of that and so read it once, left it and then read it again in two days. Um, and I did actually really like it on, on my kind of second read through and I think I need to slow down sometimes with poetry. Um, this is a collection which kind of plays with like pop culture, like specifically like black elements of pop culture and just puts them in this like really beautiful empowering um, selection of poems and there's obviously there's some bits that are sad as well, it's not all just you know fantastic fantastic days and wonderful things, there are really sad things in here as well um, but I just really liked it, I think it's really clever, I think probably there are references in here that I don't get because um, I don't necessarily think I'm its target target audience but I did really like reading it and I would recommend it if you're looking for some poetry. And just continuing on the poetry theme, um, Don't Call Us Dead by Danzez Smith was fucking fantastic. Um, it really was. I've read, I've, I've read multiple of these poems multiple times and I've read some to Tom and he's read some and it's just brilliant. It's poems about being black and being gay and being HIV positive. They're not only beautiful, they're so powerful and yeah, it's un it's understandable why this has gained so much um, praise. It really is worth it and if you um, are even vaguely interested, it's a really good collection of poetry. It's really hard hitting. Um, as I said, I've kind of gone back and read them over since I read them to start with and shared them with other people, which is always a good sign for me. And I read The Wall by John Lancaster. Um, which was a new release for this year and I did actually buy this one because I'm doing, going to do proper reviews of all the books I've been sent for review because I'm going to be good this year. Um, but The Wall is a story about a kind of like dystopian England where um, people are freaking out over the weather changes and um, immigration and a literal wall has been built around the UK. You can kind of sense the like real life parallels that are going on in this book. Um, and it follows a young man who um, is kind of picked, like drafted to go and um, serve on the wall to keep out the others and it's kind of like sci-fi dystopian story from there. I'm not going to go any further into the story than that for spoiler reasons um, but I did enjoy it, it was a really quick read um, and yeah it was kind of like near future sci-fi which is what I like, that's my favourite kind of sci-fi. I also read one more collection of poetry this month and that was John Burnside's Selected Poems. These are really beautiful poems like about nature and I, you know, I didn't underline anything and I wish I had um, but it's all just so beautiful, like, <laughs> we can't choose anything. Um, I'll just read, I've literally just opened it to a random page, but like this is the, the kind of poetry it is and it's, it's really stunning. Um, so this says, the wind has sealed our house with a thin layer of dust. Study the landing windows and you'll find tiny particles of leaf and shell, insect bodies, crystals of salt and mica. The radio is playing, you put the kettle on and standing in your winter coat and gloves. You listen to that song you've always liked, the one about love. It's just really nice. There's lots of like countryside ones. That one wasn't really that um, that countryside based, but they are all kind of rural and beautiful. And yeah, I really, really enjoyed this collection and I may go and try and find some more of him. Not this month because I have bought many books this month, but at some stage in future. So I actually have one more book that I can't talk about on this list before my final one, which is My Sister the Serial Killer. I'm gonna be doing a full review of that one. Um, I'm gonna be trying to do that with all the books I get sent for review this year. This is my aim, I'm gonna try and be better at it. Um, so the last one I can talk about now is The Book of Strange New Things by Michelle Faber. And this is a close, 
close future kind of sci-fi. Like it doesn't feel like it's right immediate now, it couldn't happen today, um, but it's not too far away from where we are now. About a man who decides to go on a, on a spaceship um, as kind of like a religious mission um, to bring Jesus to this new alien race that's been found. His wife remains at home and he's communicating with her kind of essentially via letters um, the whole time that he's out and his world is kind of very new and beautiful and shiny and perfect but strange and her world is completely falling apart and I didn't really want the book to end and it's quite a big book and normally I'm not like I, I don't go for huge books a lot but I wanted more I wanted like two more of this um it it's brilliant it is unsettling and that kind of, it kind of draws you in. I read it over Christmas and The Crimson Petal and the White I'm going to pick up at some stage soon. Um, I read Michelle Faber first when I was really young, Under the Skin. My English teacher gave it to me and I've never picked up another one since and I really fancied it and I was so right, it was so good. Um, yeah, so that's everything I read in January. I've had an absolutely fantastic reading month in January as you can tell in terms of like volume of stuff. Um, I don't know if I'll have quite the same vigour throughout the, the rest of the year. My January does tend to peak quite early um, but I have really enjoyed what I've read and hopefully you've enjoyed hearing me talk about them um, yeah if you have any of those books that you want to read let me know as always and I'll see you guys again soon in my next video bye <laughs>